One of the projects I've been working on for a while now is generating color composite video using entirely passive, passive components on a Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, and this is sort of the circuit for that. We have the, the Pico, of course, uh, an extra reset button to make programming easier, some status LEDs, and then the, the magic heart, which is the uh, eight resistors here that form up the digital to analog converter. And by pumping out eight bits at a time over to the, the PIO, we can write different voltage levels with it being a voltage divider and get different levels of analog signal. And then the code goes through and uh, generates the right voltage levels to generate composite video. Um, I'm not going to get into too much de technical detail of how that works. I'm not quite happy with how that code's working. It doesn't work right on all types of TV. Uh, all right, and we've got two extra buttons here, which are sort of a, our channel up and channel down. Uh, and so that, that's the basic overview of the hardware. It's a really simple circuit. It's just eight different resistor values. And like I was saying, I'm not very happy with the code yet, but I am pretty happy with the dem demos and the demonstrations what it does. Um, so uh, this this video is just to to demonstrate uh, just to demonstrate those quick. So if we flip up and and look at what's on the screen, there we go. Uh, the first thing we see when it turns on are the color bars. This is just letting us know that the task on core one running the PAL signal generation is running successfully. There's no, nothing clever. There's no transfer memory back and forth. It's just saying white, uh, yellow, cayenne, green, purple, red, blue, gray, and no, there's no black. It's, oh, there is black, I think, off the end, maybe. But it's just the basic colors are working and uh, that we have the PAL color carrier locked on. And we have a, a row of garbage up at the top, which is that uh, one one bit of uninitial, uninitialized memory. It's just fun to see that. Uh, so this uh, project, of course, uses the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico. So on channel one here, we have the Raspberry Pi Foundation logo. Uh, you can probably see that everything is a little bit blocky around the edges, and that's because this is uh, comparatively low resolution uh, video. This is not full. PAL resolution, uh, particularly it's double line doubled on the y-axis, which is really uh, gives it that stair step, and that's just because there's not quite enough memory on the uh, on the Pico to store a full a full frame buffer, and I've opted instead of a higher resolution to keep the full color depth, uh, which is seven uh, bits for each color as high that up. So it's somewhere around between. 16 and 21 bit color depending on how how the rounding works out uh, on channel 2 we have the bbc2 uh, test card f as an homage relationship between the raspberry pi and the uh the bbc micro that inspired it and and you'll notice that as we uh go into the channel we get some static like we're tuning into the station like you would have done in the old days and this is all just a, a digital digital generation. Uh, channel 3, this is a demo I've recommended to some friends previously, and this is just uh, eddy shedding behind a cylinder. Turbulence is a bit boring, but we have, uh, uh, now, now all the demos here on out have a label, so the top see it's our Lattice Boltzmann CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamic Simulation, eddy shedding. This is our non-dimensional time step. It's taking us about 41 and a half milliseconds to render each frame, so this is actually going only at 25 FPS, not 50. And we see we have flow going left to right, as it always should. We have an asymmetric cylinder, which uh, is at the right uh, Reynolds number, so we just get a bit of eddies coming off. So we have patches of low velocity as uh, behind the cylinder and patches of high velocity either side. A bit boring, a bit technical, but I already had code for this one lying around, so it was easy to make as another demo. Uh, but it's so slow because there's no hardware floating point on the Pico, and I haven't converted this to, uh, to hardware uh, to signed point too much effort but this demo I, is the uh, one cube demo which is after the sort of that windows 98 screen cyber with the bouncing cube and spikes would shoot out with spikes shooting, shooting out is a bit much effort but just the bouncing key, 3d cube is, is sort of a, a standard demo and we get all the, the primary colors there and we just have it bouncing around the environment and 
I wrote a little uh, 3D render for this. You can see it glitches out occasionally where it can't quite get the depths of the triangles right. So sometimes, like like we just had it there and there, we'll, we'll see sometimes that the, the depth ordering isn't quite right. But this is comparatively fast. This is only a little bit of trig. So there's lots of overhead. So instead of one cube, we can have lots of cubes. And now we'll have them, all these different cubes, and they'll, they'll go and bounce off each other. And you know you can flip. That was the channel up, down, the channel down, and you can flip back, and the the one cube is still there, hiding in the background. Uh, and even this many cubes uh, still runs pretty quick, but or memory limitations are kind of thing. Uh, I was working on this during the winter. I thought fire you could have a sort of a digital fireplace with this. We have a little sprite-like fire animation showing off some of the the color depth, color gradients, and. Uh, there are different color flames, but we have to go to channel 7 before those pop in uh, because of a bug in the code. You just realize you can also see that as the text is only in a single color here, it's much less legible than it would have been otherwise, whereas the, the white text for the, the frame time is still, still quite legible. Uh, I think one of the things uh, that's come into popular association with the, the sort of 70s, 80s, the sort of synth, synth wave, these uh, purple, blue colors with the, the orange sunsets, so I've just done a little sort of generating landscape where we have sort of a, a cliff face on the side and then a sort of valley and another cliff coming up on the other side. We have you know occasional peaks showing up and this is sort of a line-based 3D rendering and we have a little bit of a hilly landscape and, and that color gradient. It's just a sort of endlessly going thing. And one of the things I've been thinking about for this project was you know, sort of using it as a screensaver. So if I had some, some monitors lying around, I could have something like this, just generating something to have on those rather than just having them take up shelf space showing nothing. If we flip back to the, the flames, we have purple flames and we have blue-green flames as well, just for a bit of variety. So now we have some magic fire, some copper fire or something. So this is our, our synth cliffs. Uh, and uh, at this point, I was getting tired of writing uh, complex demos. So I thought, well, something I wanted something that took really took advantage of the right colors. Uh, and, and clearly, when everyone thinks of bright colors, they think of flash animations. Nope, no they don't, just kidding, that's channel 9. Channel 8, we just have the stutter static TV snow. I just need to work this out in order to get that effect on the, the test card earlier. So if we skip past the, the boring uh, emulated static, we have the uh, Weeple's Badgers animation going uh, with the mushrooms. And this was just uh, a really uh, highly compressed run length encoding compression. Uh, which is sort of you you say okay that pixel is blue and then so many pixels afterwards are blue and so you sort of have two bytes for a run of pixels and that's why you sort of have these streaks where the the color match isn't quite great and so it's uh there's there's could be some additional effort put into getting that compression working better better whereas the the mushrooms afterwards are just static image displays again so they they're uh, pretty good but th this eats up like a megabyte of the of the flash on the pico uh, so that's sort of a full color, but that still wasn't wasn't colorful enough for me. Um, but I'd also been thinking about video. So next we have the uh, Bad Apple demo. I think everyone has to do a Bad Apple demo on an 8-bit computer. Uh, although technically this is an 8-bit, but on a microcontroller, you know, the quite popular demos. And what I've just done is I've just replaced the white with the classic plasma demo. So that's uh, some more some more trig, but in this case I'm using a lookup table to make it go a bit quicker, and we'll just it just skips through doing five seconds at a time of different bits. Uh, you you can fit the whole demo on if there's nothing else, but all the other demos altogether end up uh, eating uh, a fair amount of RAM space. Uh, so future so so these are the demos, and I'm pretty happy with the demos. We have the logo again. Tuning in to test card F, Lattice Boltzmann CFD simulation, one cube, many cubes, flames, synth cliffs, static snow, badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom, uh, and then bad apple. And where I'm hoping to go from this is, is clean up the code a bit more, hopefully get it working. Um, on digital screens a bit better. Currently, part of why I think it's not working so well is this is sort of a, a pseudo uh, 25p, uh, not 25p, yeah, 25, yeah, 25 hertz uh, signal 
rather than a, a progressive scan, rather than a, a 50 hertz interlay signal. I think some digital circuits might not ju just aren't very happy with that difference. It doesn't quite, uh, when it gets to the, the end of the half frame, it, it sort of just doesn't get what you expect. It just goes back to triggering the full frame, which on the CRT just sends it back to the top. But uh, it's not necessarily going to work on a digital thing. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the demos for the uh, passively generated composite color video on a Raspberry Pi Pico. Thanks for watching.